Hi everybody, I'm really excited to show you how to create a digital escape room. It's super fun for educators to use as a testing or just a learning tool. I actually uh, learned how to do it during the COVID semester at Suffolk. I was trying to keep my students engaged and do something kind of fun for them for our semester review. So I did all kinds of research and I found this really, really neat way that you can kind of build an interactive escape room that they can access online. That way you're keeping up with social distancing and all that fun stuff. But even if not, with so many students learning online, this is going to be some you know really kind of fun way that'll keep them engaged. It'll keep them excited to learn. It's going to be great. So First things first that you want to do before you even get started with the development part and designing the escape room is you want to make sure that you plan it out. Um, it can be as elaborate as you want or it can be as simple as you want, but no matter what, you need to have some kind of blueprint. Um, the first thing I suggest you do is sit down and think about what questions you want the escapees to answer or what problem do you want them to solve in order to escape? Um, for my Suffolk IMC class, for example, I used um, a, an escape room for our semester review, like I said, where it kind of recapped and I wanted them to be able to recall all of the stuff that they'd learned throughout the semester. Um, I knew I wanted it to have levels so I kind of mapped it out based on each part of what they'd learned in IMC. Um, and then each level kind of corresponded with a different marketing discipline. And within each level, there was four or five questions that had to be answered correctly in order to unlock the next level. Um, so when you answered all the questions in that level right, you could go on to the next level. Um, and eventually, if you completed every level, you got out of the escape room. And in order to make it fun, I made the story uh, that they were a marketing firm and that they had to launch Post Malone's uh, new album. And if they successfully moved throughout you know, every department, they could attend the launch party. So just to give you an idea of what it looked like. Here is the example of the escape room that I developed for my class. Um, I had their challenge right there on the front page and I'm going to teach you how to design this and even make it a, a working website like this. Um, they had to work in teams and the teams had to race each other. They had to answer all the different questions. Uh, they had exactly an hour to do it. I even made them a fun little kind of video. Um, that introed it. You probably think that you are better now, better now. You only say that because you're not around, not around. They thought it was super fun. Um, and then right away you click in and you can see that each level had a bunch of questions that you had to answer. Once you got through that level, you were able to go on to the next level. Um, and then at the end, I even had a, a fun page where they could do something for an extra credit. So I'm going to kind of walk you through how to, once you've planned it out and thought about what your escape room game is going to look like, what questions you want them to answer, what problems you want them to solve. I'm going to walk you through how to set it up. So the first thing that you need to do is to set up your questions and set them up as locks. And you do this using Google Forms. Okay. So you just go to log into your Gmail your Google account, go to forms.google.com. And then you just create a new form and you start building the questions out. And the questions can be anything. So if it's math, you can say, you know, what's two and two, what's two plus two. Um, if it's English, you can say, um, in what year uh, did Shakespeare debut at the Globe Theater, whatever it is. Um, but you set it up and you can set up multiple choice. You can set up with check boxes, whatever it is. But the key is, is that you want to make each question both required and response validation. And what that means is that they have to put in the correct answer in order to unlock the lock. And for me, I wanted to make it a little bit more challenging and a little bit more fun. 
so for example, if I said, um, what is a type of event that a publicist holds? And I would probably make this a short answer. And again, you wanna put in that it's a response validation. So you put text contains, and the answer has to be press conference, right? But if you wanna get really tricky, you can make it so that they can't unlock it unless they use capitals, for example. So then if you wanna put a clue or a hint in the error text like I do, you could say, hey you, don't forget to capitalize. Great. Then you go ahead and you set all of those different ones up. So I could set up, let's say the second one is, what is the name of the kit that a PR person uses? And the answer, of course, you wanna put required. You wanna put in that validation. And the answer would be, obviously, you do text, contains, and it would be um, press kit. And I could put here, um, not capital here. And you go on and you build as many. So I'll just build three just to show you kind of how it works out. So for the third one, I will say, um, what does your professor do for a living? I will make it a short answer. I'll make it required. I'll make it response validation. Text contains publicist. And it's my day job. Okay, so now I've built the form. I've built the form, I've got all the correct answers in there, I've got all of the um, required check boxes filled out, I've got all of their validation in there. And now, when you do that, you just want to put a wrapper on it. So again, if you have an escape room that has one level, you probably can get away with just using one form. If you wanna have multiple levels, you'll create a form for each level that you have. So I'm just going to call this simple escape room. Okay, I'm going to put in there, I collected my responses in a spreadsheet. That way I could at least see if they weren't able to unlock every level, how many of them they got right. Uh, otherwise, it just collects the responses uh, right here. So after that, now that uh, we have our forms all set up, the next thing that we want to do is create a Google site. And this is something that Google has that makes it super easy to kind of build clickable working websites. Doesn't necessarily mean that it needs to have its own domain of, you know, www.escaperoom.com, but it'll click like a regular site. It'll publish to the internet and the kids will be able to access it and they'll think it's super fun. So create, you know, a blank site, super easy. And when this comes up, again, if you've designed it out and you've thought about your story, um, you can, it's just simple drag and drop. So you could call it here, um, Kim's Simple Escape Room. And you can drag and drop all different kinds of things. You can put pictures in there. You can change the colors of it if you want um, and all of that fun stuff. But just for this easiness, I'm gonna go ahead and if you click pages and then you click insert, if you scroll down, you can see that you can insert form, right? You click the form, I click this, that's the form that we just created, insert it, there you go. Now you have a clickable page. Now this is very simple, but you can see over here all of the fun stuff that Google Sites can do. You can see all the different layouts. They even have, um, you can change the theme of it if you want so that it can look kind of something like this. We can make it purple. Um, we can pick, you know, this one and make the colors, you know, 
green or gray or whatever one, you can change the font, all of that kind of fun stuff. Once you're done, you just go ahead and click publish. I'm gonna call it Kim's Escape Room. Right, so then you have the link that you're gonna use right here. Yours will be shorter. Um, hit publish. There you go. Now your site has been published. So you open this up. Now you can see if I go to put it in, what is a type of event that a publicist holds? And I do press conference and hit enter. See, you can see there that the um, error text comes up as the hint or the clue. So again, as you're kind of going through, you go, oh, okay. The minute you have it right, it goes and heads and unlocks. So if I wanted to do this here and I was trying to trick the kids, they would think it would have to be capitalized. Oh, no capital here. So you just do press kit and you can see it unlocks. And eventually once you get past it, you finish it up, you've entered, you can even change this when you change the form to say, congratulations, you've escaped. Now, you know, go study or do something like that. Um, but it's a super fun way to, again, just create something clickable, something interactive, something unique to help them get excited about learning. Um, and you can insert you know, new pages, so you can have multiple pages. You can have navigation on the side, so you could have um, level one if you wanted. Then you create a whole different level, you create a new form, and you can kind of do it this way. So this is a really basic overview, but again, it's something really, really simple to do. Um, if anybody would like um, further assistance or to have us help you, just check out the closing card at the end, uh, or you can fill out the form at www.ringcommarketing.com. Happy teaching.